Hey lady guys, it's KV5 MIQ Big Boy. Well come on ham radio cat. Hey there's <laughs> old ham radio cat had to jump up here and get laid down. Alright guys, we got some subjects picked up off of social media today to talk about. Uh, two things I want to bring up. One, uh, that last MFJ video, I hate to say it was my last review video. Um, Thanks to Richard and MFJ and Mr. Martin. Uh, I appreciate y'all trusting me with that. I really do. I'm going to keep MFJ's logo on my videos until the website shuts down. So I hate to see them go. Real fine company and been a real supporter after radio for a long time. Went to the Four States Amateur Radio Club meeting this morning. And our club does a drawing every week, every month for uh, free gear. Our Vice President, uh, KI5NHZ, Greg, does an excellent job running that. Uh, gives away a couple HF radios a year, uh, all the time giving different mobiles and handhelds away. And he had a pretty good drawing this morning. Had several mobile rigs and one bullfang <laughs> up there. Kent likes to really get into that drawing. He's, we're sitting there talking, that'll be what I win, and sure enough, K1ENT won the Bofang BF-17. This is a brand new dual bander, 5 watt, 2 watt dual bander. Evidently the BF-17 is a little older radio. I don't know how old, but we're going to, it's brand new. I uh, can't donate it for the channel for a review and a giveaway. So thank you Kent, Broken Circuit Ranch YouTube. Y'all be sure to check him out. Kent's a big supporter of the channel. And he's got a real cool YouTube channel also, and I'll have a link of it in the description. So probably next video, I'm going to play with this thing for about a week and uh, get to do some programming, and we'll do a review on it next weekend, and uh, it'll be part of our next giveaway. Probably going to do a giveaway about 1700 We've got that analyzer and a tire bearing, the AC brand new tire bearing, thrust bearing, and uh, this radio. So we'll be doing a giveaway here pretty quick. Guys, I got three subjects, and I may step on some toes, but I feel like this needs to be said about all three of these subjects. All right. First deal, I've done several videos on emergency comms. One thing I mentioned in a video a year or so ago, and I'm not getting political, I don't do politics in ham radio. So, but... In the 2020 inauguration, the day of and the day before, I had over a half a dozen phone calls from panicky people hearing stuff on social media like, oh my God, they're going to turn the cell phones off, or they're going to shut the internet down. How am I going to call my kids? Or, or David, can you call my daughter in Dallas on your ham radio for me? Okay. Now, panicking is not going to help. Waiting until something happens certainly ain't the idea. I've taught several different avenues people's got with the different types of radios. You can look at any of my previous videos. I've talked about CB, FRS, GMRS, and amateur radio. But being what this world is and being capitalists where people try to make a buck, you're going to have a bunch of stuff be inundated this year with telling you you can do this, if you buy this, buy that, and... It happened during Y2K. Uh, Y2K, I was attending uh, several gun shows in Dallas over the year. It was nothing but survivalist camping and end of the world supplies all the way up to the Y2K non-event that it happened. And then the next gun show, all that stuff was on sale pretty cheap. So, same way with this stuff here, like the My Emergency Radios and the Rapid Radios, don't fall for all that. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. 
This guy says, looking for a good ham radio as a first time buyer. I'll be using it in my go-to shelter in case things might happen in the world. I'm not going to say his name or where he's at. Never mention the fact that he's going to have a license or doesn't have a license now or planning on getting a license at all. It's just thinking that when emergency happens and I got a hammer to radio, I can talk. That is the dumbest idea way to look at that. Let's think about it a minute. I don't care if you're an electrical engineer, a mechanical engineer, or whatever you are, unless you have a pretty good background in antenna making, radio wave propagation, how to figure the right wavelength so you don't burn a radio up and count the stuff on hand to build an antenna, and you wait till something happens, you're probably not going to be able to get it on the air. All right? Number two. If you're just wanting something, if there's an emergency, I would be thinking you'd be better off with a shortwave receiver than trying to talk. If I ain't figured out what talking's really going to do for a lot of folks yet, I would rather be listening. I come from the air in the military when not everybody had a radio. So you, you listened. I, if you got a shortwave receiver, a piece of long wire up in a tree, there's no formula for an antenna that's the longer the higher the better and you're just listening so I think that'd be the way to go but there's always these groups trying to sell you a radio saying you don't have to have a ham license in an emergency use my radio but if in an emergency you don't have to have a ham license let me clarify that for y'all one more time because I still see this coming up if your electricity's out it's not an emergency, it's an inconvenience. If a disaster happens and emergency services are still operational in your area, it's a major inconvenience. Could be you could need help, but it's not the will give you the right to get on an amateur band without a license and start not collaring about stuff. Alright? It don't do that. Amateur radio operators are trained for emergency response, and they will probably have a station set up for a response where you could go talk to them and get information out. They can may be able to get your information out or get information back to you. But that doesn't give you the right to get on the amateur bands without a license and talk. All right? About the only thing I could say that would give you the right to the amateur bands if you look out the window and the zombies are walking up and down the street, and I'm going to say you're probably not going to have a problem with talking on amateur bands at that point. But remember, emergency service is still in effect. It may be a natural disaster, but if somebody's handling it, that doesn't give you the right just to get on the radio and talk because you're going to cause more trouble than it's worth, and you're going to end up after the fact probably getting a visit from the FCC. All right. Look at some of my earlier videos on emergency calls. I'll, in fact, I'll try to link one in here for I, tonight on, in the description so you can go back and see some things where I really broke down CB radio, FRS, GMRS, etc. And if you got any questions, shoot me an email or comment here. I'll be glad to try to, to help you. All right, next question. I heard that the technician license will all be all but useless in a couple of years. Okay. This is somebody saying it. 10 meters is going to go down, sunspot cycle is going to die off, and it'll be useless. Well, you got more than 10 meter voice with a technician license. You got four bands of CW privileges. And a lot of guys don't want to do CW. I see somebody that's old school pounding out my hand. You can get a program and a modem on a computer and send CW with a computer. I know some old ham is going to crucify me for saying that, but if I ever get a new guy in it to stay in it, I'm all for it. But as far as 10 meters being dead, yes, it will be less active. 10 meters is never dead. I don't care what anybody tells you. Back in 06, when I got back into this hobby, the 10 meter cycle, sunspot cycle was at its lowest. I largely stayed on 17 meters, but Jeff was here 
with his brother-in-law in about 07 or 08 in my shack, and I was showing his brother, HF Radio, how it worked. I worked a European station when 10-meter band supposed to be dead and had a 5-9 contact with it. 10 meters will open a little bit probably every day. It's just talking about that many people used it and everybody thinks it's dead. Get on there and call CQ. You can never tell what might happen. Monitor 28400. It's calling frequency. But don't let anybody tell you your license will be useless in a couple of years because for whatever reason, it ain't 10 meters is dead. You always have access to repeaters and you'll always have access to the low band CW options. Plus, that might give you some incentive to go ahead and upgrade to general where you'll get the 17 meter band. I guarantee you'll enjoy 17 meters. You'll make lots of DX contacts on it. All right. This is the Dodge Ford Chevy question. What is the best and most cost effective all in one radio for a beginner? All right, that's all the criteria the guy put on there. All right. Everybody will tell you everything under the sun about that their radio is better, this radio is better, a shack in the box radio is better. I've got a Yaesu 897D, one of the earlier shack in the box radios. It's got all modes, HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 440. All modes, everything. 100 watt rig. I think it's 50 and 40 on 2 meters and uh, and uh, 440. Great radio. Do I ever use the other stuff on it? Very rarely. I use it for HF. The problem with the shack in the box, one radio, is if it ever has to go to the shop, you don't have another radio. My recommendation, radios are a little cheaper now than it was when I got into this hobby. Look at an HF 6 meter option for HF. All right. And then pick you up a two meter option, 440 dual band, FM mobile, or get an all mode for VHF and UHF. And you'd have everything covered. And if one goes down, you're not totally in the, out of the loop with the radio being down. That's, that's the worst question a new guy can ask because he's going to get told, if you don't buy what I buy, you're wrong. Or... This is the best radio, and that guy's going to tell you it's, this is the best radio for one or two reasons. It's either the radio he wish he had a ball, or it's the radio sitting on his bench. Now, personally, in newer radios, I kind of like Yaesu radios better. I've got four Yaesu radios right now. And the menus are easier for me to operate. And they're, you can take your time maneuvering around in the menus. They're a little easier for me to operate. Does it work any better than this ICOM or Kenwood I've got? No. I've made contacts with all of them. 100 watt radios, I've made contacts with every one of them. Just my preference. Although Yesus are kind of specific for Yesu accessories. I know one of the guys at the club got one of these new 710s. We had a hard time finding a matching tuner. He wanted a little better tuner for it because the auto tuner in it didn't go as high as he wanted it to. And although Hill has got an everything Yesu page to how to set their mics to Yesu, I they didn't have it for the 897. I've got a good Hill boom set here that I never did get really set right for my 897. I went back to the Yesu desk mic. Works great. And I like Yesu. That's the only glitches I've seen with Yesu is they're kind of sensitive to Yesu only accessories. Not necessarily true for everything, but that's just been my experience. Guys, remember Main Trading Company in Paris, Texas? He's got his 15 year anniversary sale going right now. Fixed to be a big moving sale. They're going to be moving in their new location, hopefully around July. I think he's planning on radio days or something up there after that. Uh, we're going to do a uh, Giveaway here at least at 1,700 subscribers. We're at 1,523. Um, field day, we're, we've already done our little mini field days. I may attend, plan to attend the four states amateur field day, shoot some video there. Thanks again, everybody, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate y'all paying attention to me and old ham radio cat. 
is KB5MIQ Big Bull, same three.